Hey guys, I'm a science potato, and today I have another Kira guide video for you. Today we're going to be discussing the material selection types within Kira. So right now we're using 4.6, which is the latest version of Kira, and we're on our standard interface here. So up at the top left here, we can see we have our printer type and beside it our material. So we are using a generic PLA. And that's usually what Kira defaults to, and that's also why the default color for models is yellow, as yellow is the designated color for PLA. So to access our materials, all we have to do is click this little drop down menu. We can see our brand is custom and our material is PLA. But we have a list we can select here. We can see I've made one called Lemon, but we can go to Manage Materials. And from this page, we can modify all of our different material settings we may want. It's important to note that this window is the Preferences window submenu of the materials. So that means rather than clicking through these menus to get to this function, I can go up here to Preferences, Configure Kira. Now I can find all of the settings, including our material settings, our printer profiles, and our list of printers themselves. So we have our material list here. We can see there are some drop-down menus. So Ultimaker being this is their software, they have it preloaded with all of their materials that they make, as well as the color types for those materials. So there's a huge selection of their materials there. There's also some other materials here, as well as their generics. And if you mouse over and click on any of these functions, you'll see here the list of settings for that material. So if we go to generic PLA, we can see display name, brand, material type, some other variables here as well. We can set in the weight of a spool and the cost of a spool and it will give us a breakdown of cost per gram on parts that we slice. But other than that, we can't change these variables. You can see here the density, I can't change this density. That's because it is a pre-built material, so if we want to modify these settings, we need to create our own material. So to do that, we just hit Create here, and it will create a new material for us. So now we can set a display name for that material. We will call it MyPLA with bad capitalization, that's fine. Then we can also set a brand. We're gonna call it Super Brand, as well as our material type, which is going to be PLA. Here we can set our color. How about a little kind of brownish purple? As well as our density and some other settings. Now what if you're unsure of what the density of your material is? If you leave it at 1.24, which is the default value, it may be wrong. PLA is a little lighter at 1.21, and some other materials can be heavier than this. Here's how you can set it so that Kira is always correct on the estimates. All you have to do is print something, doesn't really matter what it is, and then weigh that part on a precision scale that's at least accurate to one gram. Then after you've weighed that part, say that part weighs 50 grams, you can go back into your slicer here, and when you hit slice, it estimates the material weight of your print at 15 grams. So if I needed this to be 50 grams, all I have to do is just go into my materials here, find that custom material that I made, and modify this density value until the estimates at the bottom here say it's, it will weigh 50 grams. Because we know for a fact that it does weigh 50 grams, so once our density is set to a value that equals that, we know we've reached the density of our material. So that's a way of setting this value without actually knowing the density of your material. Here we can also set our filament diameter, although it will sort of give you an error if this diameter value is different than what's set in your machine settings. So if we go to our printers here and go to our machine settings, our extruder value, we can see our material diameter set to 2.85, although we're not actually using that, it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> but if Kira does see a discrepancy between this value and your materials value within the materials preferences, it will give you an error. But generally, it doesn't actually matter. If you feel like controlling this variable, you can, but I have never used it. Then we can set our costs and weight so that Kira can estimate the cost per part for us. So a regular spool weighs about 1,000 grams, which is a kilogram. And the cost of that spool, let's say, is 
Here we can see our cost per meter and the length of our material. Although I do not recommend using these variables either, as we want to go based on per gram, not per meter, because a meter is not very specific at all because the material types can change. Whereas a gram is a gram and will always be a gram no matter what. So it's a much um, easier system to use. Then we also have a description of our material we can put in here. I'm just putting a random thing. And then we also have adhesion information. So maybe this material doesn't like using a certain type of adhesive, say a sugar-based adhesive, and prefers glue stick. We can just type in glue stick. And now if there are other people using this system, they can see the description of the material and adhesion properties for it. We can also go to our print settings here, and some of these variables will show up in our slicer settings as we change materials. Now, these are very generic settings. For instance, there is a single hot end temperature value here, and that's the only value you can change. But if we open up our slicer settings here, and we go to our material, we can see there are in fact four different temperature variables that can be set here. Same with our bill plate has multiple temperatures that can be set. So it may be misleading if you use the setting in here and assume your temperature will always be the same when there are other variables that can modify those settings. Same with retraction distance and speed. If we go down to our travel settings here, we can see that um, our material settings, there we go. So we can see that our, there are a lot of retraction values here. So it's not best to rely on that one single value, especially across multiple machines, because different types of extruders can have different retraction amounts, regardless of the material type being used. So now that we have our material and we've set our filament um, cost as well as our density, we can slice it. So we can get our print time, we can see it'll weigh about 15 grams, and it'll cost about 45 cents to print this part. And that's basically all there is to the material system. We have our custom material here, as well as our other custom material with sub settings that we can add there. So adding your own material type of a specific material allows you to modify all the variables here. So that's really nice. But if they do happen to have the specific type of material you're using in this list, you can select that as well. But their list is not very populated at all. It's mostly just their materials, but it's very easy, like I've shown in this video, to create any materials you would like for your parts. All right, thank you for this. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like my content and I'll be creating more Kira guides as well as 3D printing and design commentaries in the future. Thanks, bye.